If 80% of construction is handling material, and it is, I have some practical suggestions and things that I've picked up over the years so that you can move that sheet of plywood or that beam or that board without breaking your body and without slowing the job down so badly that they fire you. So some of the things that I'm going to show you may be just garden variety seen it a million times. Why are you talking about this Wadsworth kind of maneuvers? And some of them, you know, maybe you haven't seen before. So have a watch and sort of keep track of the fact that when you're moving material, you're dealing with leverage, you're dealing with friction, you're dealing with balance, you're dealing with inertia and momentum, and just sort of a mindset of how can I make this material get to the right spot with a minimum of effort in the smallest practical amount of time. Moving boards in a stack from the front to the back if you need to get down into some better material. So if you want to get these boards off the top and you're gonna, you're gonna get in here, and you no, you don't have to do that. You don't have to lift the whole board. You just want a few boards off the top and so you can use inertia and momentum to flip that back up there out of your way and I didn't have to lift a board and I certainly didn't have to walk down the stack. Now the same thing in reverse is if I want to get down into the meat of the stack back there and so I have to move some material down onto the front I don't want to come to here and do this and pull them all down like that if I don't have to. So I can use friction. Friction is part of leverage. Just slip them off the front of the stack and then hold them back when gravity begins to do its good work. And I didn't lift anything. Maybe you're packing boards up onto a deck, right? And so the question becomes, do I carry them at my waist or do I carry them on my shoulder? Well, the first thing is, you don't go to the middle to pick them up. Right here, I'm picking up half the weight of those boards. And the further I come to the middle, the more of the weight that I have until I get to the balance point and practice finding the balance point, right? And then the maneuver that people do that's really hard on your body is to swing it up onto your shoulder, right? If you're going to do that, leave one end on the ground while you're wrestling with it so that the whole thing is not out of control. Leave one end onto the ground and you can just do this. Now that may be intuitive, but it's not the only way. You can, particularly if you're doing more, Let's put another board on here. Now by the time you get four on here, it begins to be hard to keep them organized when you're, when you're making that move. So you could pick up one end. Now, there's plenty to say about keeping your back straight, and I bend my back too much. Your legs are better when you can do it. Pick it up, and then take a minute maybe and run it over to a stop and then just walk it on up. Until you think you're at the balance point and then find out how you did. Oh yeah. See, I didn't have to lift much. It was just pressing one end up until you get to where it's gonna be about right. Now it's a problem if you can't run it up against something because there's something about the physics of coming up in the air, it wants to run out. So you have to kind of move under it. it. Takes a little practice, but it's worth knowing how. It's not always worth the trouble of getting it up on your shoulder. And a lot of weight pushing down on your shoulder is hard on your body, right? So you can leave it at your waist, but don't hold it out there. Get the advantage of some friction up against your pants, right? Press it against your hip. Lock it in against your hip or your belly. And then your back and your shoulders is carrying part of it. And some of it's transferred straight down onto your thigh. Now, if you're setting something down that is just plain too heavy, you can rest it on your knee. And at this point, my back isn't holding a pound, but my shin is, okay? So that's sometimes helpful in lifting something. You can rest it on your knee till you get to a midpoint and create a lever 
for getting it up into the air. Now stacking lumber, if they've tasked you, if they task you with bringing a bunch of decking of uh, plate stock up onto a deck, don't just throw them in a heap because they may have told you to bring 40 pieces. And if you can't keep track of it while you're walking, you need to be able to count it in the stack. So it doesn't have to be that neat. I mean, that's nice. But if you waste 10 minutes making the stack pretty, they're gonna yell at you anyhow. But it needs to be good enough that the guys can come over and pick it up when they're ready and you can walk back and count what's left. They've gotta be able to count what's left. So OCD will bite you, but a little OCD will get you a raise. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're going to stage the material at an intermediate location, that is, maybe the plate stock's got to go up on a roof or it's going to, you know it's going to have to move, be moved again. After you move it the first time, don't stack it on the ground. If there's room to stack it leaning up, can you see that if you move it once and leave the end leaned up, then the next time you're already ready to put it on your shoulder and get into motion without lifting a pound. You see that? if it is staged at rest at the right location and oriented in the right way, you don't have to lift it the next time to get it up on wheels and get it moving across the job. So let's say that I want to get three or four of these boards over onto that truck. And that truck is, you know, 13 feet away from me. I can either pick it up and I can walk around and I can stick it, sit it on there, or I can use the stack itself to help me. Very little footwork, didn't lift much. The stack can be a fulcrum for moving and using the leverage to get the boards that are in the stack somewhere else. So part of using leverage is facilitating leverage for the people around you. The more leverage on the job, the more work is getting done. So if you walk up to a brand new stack where the ends are all pretty flush, how do you get your fingertips under there without breaking your fingernails? Well, if you're working by yourself, you slip it off the side. But if you're working with a buddy, you first thing you do is push two or three or however many you want to him, and then he gets a hold of it and pushes it back to you, and everybody picks up and goes. You see that? Let's do that again. We're gonna go four this time, Brady. I walk up and I push four back, and he raises four up right through the stickers, and he slides it back to me, and out we go. So make a note. Part of being aware of leverage and situational awareness with leverage is facilitating leverage for everybody all around you all the time. Okay, so that's probably about enough drilling down on handling boards. Let's talk about handling sheet goods, usually four by eight, sometimes light, sometimes heavy. But there are some, there are some moves associated with this that are helpful. Now, for about the first 20 years, I didn't worry about moves because I was young and Thought I was strong, but I can tell you this, that youth and flexibility and strength are temporary conditions, but work is a lifetime commitment. And so you gotta be ready to learn some alternative methods. So for years, picking plywood up off the ground or off a stack, it was spit on your hands to increase the friction, grab it, clean and jerk, throw a hand under there, turn around and head to the trailer. Now, Right away, it became obvious that it hurts to supinate. You write it supination and pronation, rotating your wrist. And the question becomes, gosh, do I turn my hand around and do it like that? Well, that doesn't feel good. Or do I do it like this? Well, that feels better. One thing you can do is carry it on three fingers so your little finger is not forcing you to twist it so far. That's a little better. The next thing you figure out is it hurts that hand, especially three quarter inch or inch and an eighth. So you throw it up on your shoulders and your head like this. Now the next thing that you figure out is you don't have to leave it in your hand. You can throw it in the crook of your arm like that, okay? Now that doesn't hurt at all. It's no good in a wind. I mean, if the wind comes up, this sheet's gone but you can carry that a good long ways in the crook of your arm. So then you're walking across the job and you, it's either in your elbow or hanging off the into your hand and it's time to set it down and you can run one end in there and you know slide it. There's nothing wrong with sliding it and drop it. That's great. Or
retracing our steps. You can do this. I'm not saying this is better, but it's easier on your body. See that? I didn't have to manhandle that twist and slide it in. You just put the end on the ground and let the plywood fly. It's an alternative. So we're back to the same deal. Half inch plywood, not that heavy, down on the ground. But instead of, and so, I mean, this is better, right? Instead of doing this and then doing the high speed flip of the wrist, what I like better, and it only took me 20 years to figure out, is this. I haven't lifted anything yet, and there's the midpoint, and I still haven't lifted anything. You see that? And I can just rock it clear up on my head. And then when I get to the trailer, I can do the same thing. While I'm walking, I can lower the corner, land it on the ground, give it a push. And you can do that all day, and it doesn't rack your wrists quite so bad. Three quarter inch tongue and groove OSB. It's heavy. I can't get it up off that stack, but I can bring it out and let it down. And I can roll it up and I can roll it up. And I still haven't lifted much. And then this, see that? Now flipping it into the trailer like that becomes problematic after a while. I mean, a lot of banging around. And so you can either slide it in or you can just tip it over. Plywood will float on the air a little bit. You can throw a piece of plywood off a roof and if you're careful and you give it a little spin, you can frisbee that thing to the ground and if you're lucky, you won't break the corner off. So under the broad general category of um, the silly things we undertake as young men, I was sheeting a roof in Wyoming, Powell, Wyoming. It's windy in Wyoming. I was working for Wade Welch. He was a great guy. And we were sheeting the roof on a, I think it was 512 pitch, big ranch style house. But the wind was blowing every bit of 50 miles an hour. And we had it all laid on some little jacks up against the eave. So I could get over there and I could pick it up with the wind blowing in my face and the pitch of the roof behind me. So you gotta visualize this. The sheeting was 5 eighths, I think might have been three quarters and I would drag it up and the wind is howling and I would spin it around on the roof to where my back was to the wind and the wind was blowing like this and the wind would lift the end of that sheet up and it would float in front of me as I walked up the pitch I would lay it down oh so carefully rotate it and throw a nail in it now that was dumb because a piece of three-quarter inch plywood turned loose in a 50 mile an hour wind is a lethal, lethal thing. And nobody wanted to fall, but it's just an example of the silliness of the immortality of youth. But doggone it, it was a fun afternoon. So I started hauling hay with my dad when I was 10. I was not big enough to pick up a bale, but dad says, that's all right, you can flip them end for end. And so he had me flipping bales so I would get about three and a half feet of distance, or maybe five feet, every time I flipped a bale. And I imprinted on the idea that half of the weight is better than all the weight. The closely related thing to that is that it's better to slide a board against friction than to carry a board against gravity, right? So if you have a chance, you can use friction to let it down easy. And if I don't have to pick this sheet up, I just put my arm under it and slide it. And then instead of picking up the whole darn thing, just lean it against, oh, did you see that right there? See how much easier that is than walking to the middle of the board? Get your fingers under there. Friction and leverage beats youth and strength most of the time. Now there's one more thing if, if I mean, if you're interested. Got to pick the sheet up. You can grab it, you can hold your toe right there and lift that sheet up like that. And then if you've got to carry it a long ways, you can go to the end. And now it's, I mean, I'm not feeling any pain anywhere. And I can kind of see where I'm going and I'm steadying it with my right hand. And if I need to change directions, it's as easy as that. 
so I figured out that I would rather carry a sheet from the end than from the side most days. So the best mechanical advantage and leverage trick that I can tell you pertains to moving plywood and lumber at the same time in the same trip. And it's this, get a forklift, you know, or a crane. It's why I've got two cranes and forks to put on my little Kubota. And it's a luxury, but keep your eyes out for an opportunity to access those luxuries. Because, um, you know, we can bite off more than we can chew when we pick things up and we start walking with them and, you know, compromising our balance and trying to do it in a high wind. I, you know, I have, I have one story, but as I wrap this up, I was working on the health club at Green Valley in, in uh, Las Vegas, the Green Valley Health Club. It was big, it was cast in place concrete. It was ginormous. The biggest pour there was 960 yards one day. And I was the second man hired and the last man off the job. I got to do a lot of stuff. The superintendent was Bob McGinnis. That guy was smart. And one particular day, I mean, it was, it was five or 600 feet across the job from where the two by 12s were to where the edge form was being set up. And I needed three 16 foot two by 12s and there was no forklift and I was the only, everybody else was working. So I went over to the stack and I thought, do I take two on this trip and then come back for one? Or do I take one and come back for two? And I said, no, I can carry three. Now three 16 foot two by 12s weigh about 200 pounds. And I got them up and I walked them up in the air and I got the balance point and I settled 200 pounds on my shoulder and I started that 600 feet and man, things started to hurt. I mean, that's hard on your shoulder. I think it was my left shoulder driving me into the ground and I was just about there and Bob McGinnis came around the corner. He looked at me and he smirked and he said, why didn't you take four and make it worth the trip? Well, what he was saying was, that was dumb. What are you doing, kid? But in my heart of hearts, I knew, you know what? I didn't mean for this to happen, but that guy knows that I got my head in the game. That guy knows that even though I didn't think anybody was watching, I intended to get some work done. And it's always a compromise, isn't it? Between intending and making the work happen and being smart so that there's something left of your body when you're an old man. We can't use our bodies like rented equipment all the time, but sometimes doggone it, doggone it. You just gotta put your head down and move those boards. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.